One of my favorite, and also one of the most inexpensive ways to enjoy Alaska, is by renting one of the public-use cabins that are available throughout the state. These cabins are rented by the Forest Service, National Parks, the state, as well as some private entities. They don't have a lot of amenities, but if you're looking for a genuine Alaska experience, you can't go wrong here. With over 300 cabins available, it's actually quite a challenge to choose the right one for your particular adventure. With all of these choices, it can be hard to choose the right cabin. I've done the research for you, and I've found the 10 most popular cabins in the state of Alaska. It's hard to get a reservation, but if you get a reservation in one of these cabins, you're almost guaranteed a great time. Number 10 on our list is Kelly Lake Cabin on the Kenai Peninsula, located close to Soldatna. This is a newer cabin. It was built in the summer of 2009. It requires about a quarter mile hike on the Seven Lakes Trail. It has really good reviews. It will sleep four people and does come with a boat. Number nine on the list is Barber Lake Cabin on the famed Russian River of the Kenai Peninsula. This cabin requires a little over a five mile hike to get to but it's well worth it. It will sleep six to eight people and is in one of the best places to view wildlife on the entire Kenai Peninsula. Number eight on the list is Upper Omar Lake Cabin on the Kenai National Wildlife Refuge. This cabin requires about a quarter mile hike from Skilkak Lake Road. This cabin will sleep four and as you can see, is in really good shape. Like all of the Kenai National Wildlife Refuge cabins, this is a great place to observe wildlife. Being on a lake also has certain advantages. Number seven on the list is Green Island Cabin. Located halfway between Whittier and Seward, this cabin, although popular, isn't easy to get to. You're gonna have to either charter a plane or a boat to enjoy this cabin. However, this cabin literally has it all from fishing to hunting, uh, both freshwater and saltwater fishing. It will sleep up to six guests and is guaranteed to provide a genuine Alaska outdoor experience. Located near Seward, the Dale Clemens cabin is popular year round. Getting here won't exactly be easy. In the summer, it's about a four and a half mile hike but the cabin is located above the timberline and offers amazing views. If you plan on using this cabin during the winter, be aware that certain trails are definitely gonna have avalanche danger. During the summer, you can either take the trail on foot or use a bicycle. Number five on the list is the Denali Cabin in Denali State Park, a few hours north of Anchorage. It's located in the Kasugi Ken campground. This is a drive up cabin, probably part of what makes it so popular. You can stay up to five nights and it'll sleep up to 10 people. If you want to enjoy the Denali area, this is gonna be a great option. Also located near the Denali cabin is the Hunter cabin, which is number four on the list and the Takasha cabin, which is number two. These cabins are all located two to three hours from Anchorage but would provide a great base for exploring the Denali area. The remaining two cabins are actually located near Juneau in Southeast Alaska at the Eagle Beach State Recreation Area. The number three on the list is the Saturday Creek Cabin. This cabin will sleep up to 10. This cabin is drive-in accessible and is located right next to Eagle Beach, which, de which definitely makes it really popular. The number one most popular public use cabin in all of Alaska is the Berry Patch Cabin just down the road from Saturday Creek Cabin on Eagle Beach State Recreation Area. If you want to enjoy this cabin, you're going to have to book it way early. It's booked almost every single day within the six month reservation window. You can drive to this cabin and it will sleep up to 10. 
clearly there's something about this special cabin that keep people coming back time after time. If you've stayed at one of these cabins, or if you have some questions about the Forest Service cabins in general, leave a comment and I'll make sure I get back to you.